Hello, my name is Tim. I'm a chorus from Germany. And today I will show you a breakdown of a look for a short movie. In this breakdown, I also show a rather less known technique that I like to use. The goal was to achieve a rather unexcited, not too warm and a bit greenish film look. I can't reveal anything about the story. And I also can only show some certain images. In this scene, the two characters just have a problem and start to argue slowly. So I wanted to make the scene not too gloomy and not very warm, but see yourself. First things first, here's my color management, nothing special, simply in YRGB, in the timeline in Arilog C and as output Rex09 and Gamma 2.4, because that's what my monitor is credited paid for. The footage is from a short movie, it's 10-bit shot on Canon, and this is one of my note trees. I use rather a very simple one, very straightforward and easy to follow. I skip my groups and timeline level and put it all into the clip level so you can follow along very easy what happens here. In first place is my halation, nothing special. I mostly use the classic variant here. In the third place is my IDT. Here I use either a normal color space transform or as in this case, a self-built IDT. The advantage of an IDT is the better preparation of the negative for the processing afterwards. By negative, I mean the log vector. The IDT has nothing to do with negative emulation. It just helps me to transform the vector better, in this case from Canon Log 2 to Arri Log C. Here at the very end, I have my film print emulation, also a lot. It also builds my ODT and transforms the image from Arial C to Rex 9 and Gamma 2.4. The LUT is a Kodak print emulation. I build it myself from a scan. The white point is D65, but this LUT is a bit special because it contains almost no contrast, but color space and gamma transformation, and of course, colors processing. Let me show you what I mean in a minute. In front of my IDT is my exposure, simply done with offset, just to bring my vector up a bit so that nothing crashes and that the shadows come better in place. I'll make the image big so you can see better where we are now. The benefit of a good IDT lies precisely in processing the negative as well as possible in the colors, not only a simple color space and gamma transformation, but also transforming the colors for better color separation. Now let me show you the difference between this LUT and a common color space transformation quickly. Just for better and faster comparison, let me create another version. And if I turn this LUT node off and add another node behind, applying a CST, and of course, switch the input color space to Arri White Gamut and the input Gamma to Arri Log C3, and in the output color space to Rex 9 and output gamma to gamma 2.4. You can see a very similar image in contrast. Let me show you a bigger image. And now I switch back to the version with a LUT and back again to the version with a CST again. Can you see the difference? Just have a look at the waveform again, back and forth. The main difference lays in the colors, less in contrast. Again, have a look at the bottom of the waveform. The CST version stretches a vector more than my LUT. Okay, let me turn back to the version with a LUT. Next note here is my balance. This is only for color correction. On the bottom behind the LUT, I have two of my helper LUTs. This LUTs are only intended to assist with a color correction. This one shows me the neutrals and the shadows, and this one the skin tones. With the help of this LUTs, I can quickly correct my image very easy. Nothing special, very straightforward. You can build such LUTs by your own. It's not hard. Or you can download them for free. Link is in the description. Now I want to apply contrast. For this I use one of my film contrast curves. This curve contains just contrast. I created this curve 
manually from a scan here I use only 20% of the contrast curve otherwise it would be way too strong since a film curve only reflects the contrast of the scan but also changes the chromaticity in the mids. I made a matching gray patch this of course also only to 20% in the key output. Normally I have this two note burned in a LUT but I wanted to show you not only the LUT but the curves for a better understanding what's going on. I can use these curves as a kind of IDT too. Let me show you what they do. If I switch off the IDT and the corresponding exposure node and the print LUT and then set the two film curves to 100%, I have a film contrast. This film curves are optimized for aridoxy, but I also have some for Da Vinci White Gamut. But in this grading, I want to use this curves rather supportive. So I turn on again the IDT exposure and the print LUT and reduce the output of the curves again to 20%. Okay, but the image is too harsh for me, especially in the shadows. And that's why I now work a bit against the film curves here in a node in front of. Here I have simply taken back the contrast in the HDR wheels and adjusted the pivot a bit. That's it. Just let me show you the contrast changes. I turn the film curves and this contrast compensation node off and on, off, on very subtle but effective contrast changes. In the next node, I lifted the deep shadows a bit with a little Luma compression because I wanted to introduce a bit more details in this area. Again, it's a very subtle change, but if I show you a big screen and turn this node on and off, you can see the difference clearly. Now the contrast looks good to me. Let's do some color work. For this, I have this row of nodes, but instead of arranging them in a parallel node stack, I connected them in series. Why? Quite simple. This way I can make sure that I edit the U first, then make some adjustments to the changes if necessary, and then adjust the saturation for individual colors on this again afterwards. And as I said, this is one of my more very simple no trees. I don't always do it this way, but here I wanted to keep it simple and in a serial node structure. On the color base node, I did some changes in the mids by using the gamma in the primaries just to pull out a bit of that reddish magenta. That's it. On this color sat node, I did some saturation changes in the color warper too. Here to help out with a color separation, as you can see, this brings the orange more more in front and helps to let the bluish tones pop out a bit more, nothing else. On the color luma node, I just used the U versus luma curves to pull down the luma of the chromaticity a bit. This helps pull out some foliage and makes the colors appear a bit more saturated and a touch deeper. Nothing special, very straightforward. In the next row, I have a chrome effect as a first note. This makes the colors look more distinctly deep. The chrome effect comes from the analog photochemical world and I have recreated it here in a very simple way. I set the key output to only 30%, otherwise the effect would be way too strong. If I set the output to 100%, as you can see, way too much. Let me show you what's going on in this compound node. Basically, I have a simple layer stack and each layer contains a LUT. Each LUT was created from curves and a special combination of blend techniques. One LUT for the red channel, one for the green and one for the blue. These LUTs are finally blended over each other using the blend mode darker color. That's it. Nothing special. The first and last node are just placeholders. Next node in my node tree is just a placeholder 2. Here I make some final color adjustments if needed. In this case, this node is empty.
Right behind this, I got a layer node stack. In the first node here, I just reduce the saturation a bit if necessary in the HDR wheels. In this case, I put it down to 0.89. This is needed for this layer node stack, which I explain now. Below, I have a node with a curve. This curve is designed to increase the contrast with dodge and burn. It's one of my base dodge and burn curves. I like this method more than most other methods for dodge and burn. They produce the best results in my opinion and the results looks mostly a bit more organic. I think you got the idea. With this method, I immediately get a bit more depth, a bit more punch. I like it. Now comes the fun part. In the next layer node, I applied a power window and tracked it. And this node, I also have a curve for touch and burn. All these curves here in this layer node stack are nothing else than luminance curves. With this, I determine which areas should appear darker and which brighter. The trick is to set the composite mode to linear light. Very easy and very simple just using the math of colors. With this node, I brought the subject a bit more to the front and this separated it a bit more from the background so the audience is more focused on the actors than on the environment. This is an essential task of color grading. The viewer's eye should be guided with support. So in this node, I primarily use the luminance curve to change the contrast by dodge and burn. The node below is just the same for the other actor. And if I turn off all these three nodes here, off and on, I guess you see the huge difference. Very clean and straightforward method to achieve a very good separation. Of course, there are other great methods, but I like this one very, very much. As last note in this stack, I have applied a vignette, nothing special, but here as a Luma curve too. The key output is reduced, otherwise it would be too heavy. Remember, a vignette should never be obviously recognizable as a vignette. If a vignette is perceived as a vignette, it is a bad vignette. By the way, this applies to all relightings. Next note called finals is quite simple. Here I only adjusted the saturation a bit. Usually I make some final adjustments if needed. The more I have to adjust here to get the look I wanted, the more this node shows me how well I've done in the notes before. In other words, if I have to adjust a lot, my grading before is not good enough. So this node also gives me feedback about my node tree or about the settings I made here before. After creating a look, you have to clean up. It's not a must, but that's usually how you do it. This includes neutralizing or balancing the blacks if you want to. In this case, I use the lock wheels to correct the shadows. That's the most common way to do it. As next, I use the Vibrance Mix DCTL to adjust the Vibrance to make the image a bit more vivid. Again, I made settings for the six vectors separately and took back the skin tones a bit. But in summary, very subtle changes. Let me show you what's happening here. If I turn this node off again, look at the vector scope too and on. As you can see, it's not a huge change, but it lets the colors come more vivid. The image comes to life. You can see it on the chromaticity scope too. I think it's clear. Finally, I added a glow effect, but in a different way, like most of you would expect. I was not interested in a glow in the common sense. Further, I used this effect at this point as a kind of, mm, let's call it soft focus. The shine threshold is usually pulled down very far. I also reduced the spread a bit. And then instead of the usual use composite modes, soft lights or add for glow effects, I choose a blend mode difference and of course reduce the opacity. 
Afterwards, I adjusted the gain and gamma a bit to make the image not appear too dark to keep the levels and not to change the luminance again. With this technique, I can easily and quickly soften an image, for example, to get away from the exaggerated digital sharpness of modern lenses and cameras. At the same time, I lose almost no details. Let me zoom in a bit and off again and on off on i hope you can see this on youtube finally too what you should also be aware of is this kind of soft halo on the edges here of the actors again off on off hope you see it on youtube this helps to let the image look more consistent and organic, it helps keeping things together in making an image more pleasing. Just try this technique. As last in this very simple note tree, I applied grain as a parallel node to the glow. Here I simply started with a 35mm 200G and reduced the grain size and the grain strength a little bit. And that's it. I select all involved nodes. Just a moment, <laughs> take some time. Here we started, this is the result. That's it. I hope you could take something from this little look breakdown for you. And if you like it, please leave a thumb up Thanks for watching and listening.